So when you first uh, enter the web mapping application, you'll get this disclaimer. Uh, it details some of the considerations involved with using this data and the application. You can just go ahead and click OK. And if you want to, you can click the box in the bottom left if you don't want to see the pop up again. Uh, once you've done that, done that, you'll be able to see the preliminary planning area. Uh, just to give you a general layout of the screen. Uh, over on the left here, you'll have the home button. Um, that will zoom you out to the full extent of the preliminary planning area. You'll have basic controls for zooming in and out, which if you have a mouse wheel, you can also use that as well. You'll have a toolbar with various functions that you'll be able to interact with the underlying data, and I'll go through some of those during this uh, presentation. You'll have a legend. Uh, that's going to show any currently active layers. So uh, as we'll see later, when you turn on a layer, that will pop up in the, the legend. And uh, very importantly, we have uh, the user guide and quick start guide uh, here towards the bottom of the screen. Uh, if you click on those, it'll open up a, a new window. Um, within the comprehensive user guide, you can go to the table of contents. And if clicking on an item, it'll take you right to that specific item where you can get the screenshots and some additional detail. And so that's going to be the uh, most thorough resource. But if you want just a quick uh, guide to get into the application, uh, the Quick Start Guide will serve that purpose and basically give you a, a layout of the screen. Uh, the last item here, uh, you'll see these uh, five icons uh, under the search bar. Um, those are for uh, each, each of the public trust categories, uh, commerce layers. Um, you'll have navigation in the operation layers in the next one, fishery layers, uh, recreation layers, and environmental stewardship layers. And so I'll go ahead and start getting into those. I do want to mention that um, all of these different categories, you can mix and match. Turning on layers in one will not preclude you from using another. They'll still remain on. Uh, if you'd alternatively like, you can also go to the all layers list in the toolbar, and that will list all of the layers that are included in those categories. So within those categories, um, you'll notice some controls at the top of the panel. Uh, for one, you'll be able to search for keywords that will give you uh, specific layers. Um, also, you'll have a drop down here uh, where you can turn all the layers on within that particular category or turn all of them off. Um, you also have the ability to expand all layers. And that's going to show you the underlying symbology um, that would show up in the legend. Uh, the difference being that this will show you what the symbology will be without the actual layer being turned on. So I'll go ahead and collapse those again. And now within individual layers, you'll have some additional controls. So I'll go ahead and zoom into a portion of the screen. I'm going to turn on the Silver Strand training complex that was provided by the Navy. And if I click on the ellipses next to that layer, You'll notice I have a variety of different controls. I can zoom to that particular layer. I can adjust the transparency, which I'll go ahead and do now. Um, if you had underlying data that you wanted to see better, that would be a good way to do it. I'll show you another way uh, in just a bit. You can also disable the pop-up. Now, currently, uh, this pop-up is enabled as it is with most layers. And what that means is that when you click on a feature in this layer, you'll get additional information. Um, in this particular layer, you'll get some additional contact information and some considerations with um, this particular polygon. Um, but you can also disable it if, if you have a lot of layers on, as it might become um, somewhat cluttered with uh, pop-ups. Uh, you can also choose to move that layer up and down in the uh, contents pane here. You can also view it in an attribute table. Um, this little arrow at the bottom here, it's docked, but it actually contains uh, attribute tables of any currently enabled layers, and you can go right to it when selecting that option. Um, you also see I have the coastal access locations and a couple of the, the other layers that are currently turned on. So I'll just go ahead and dock that again. Um, and then uh, most importantly, um, at the bottom of the ellipses menu, uh, you'll be able to click on show item detail. And this will take you to a page uh, the details, the description, and summary of that data, and gives you uh, any terms of use, uh, credits, the, the source, and you'll also be able to go to the um, full metadata uh, for that item. 
I'll go ahead and turn that off and go back to the full extent. Uh, at this point, I'll start going through some of the uh, items in the toolbar over at the top right. And I should also note that uh, just as with the main uh, ocean planning website, you can still navigate to uh, other portions of the site uh, using the, the options at the top here. Um, so I already introduced the legend and all layers list. Um, some other tools that might be useful, we have measurement tools, um, both in terms of distance, area, and also if you wanted to get specific coordinates. And these can all change the units you're using. And then we also have uh, a tool called the screening tool and report. And um, to give you an example, I'm going to type in a location here. Or Imperial Beach, that'll zoom me right to the location of interest. And you've got a couple different selection methods here. I'm going to go ahead and use the draw selection method and just draw a box. I don't have too many layers turned on, but just for illustration purposes, I'm going to select what's in it. And then I can also create a, a buffer. In this case, I'll go for a half mile. We'll see it buffers that out, and then I can click for a report. Now, what you'll see is that many of the returning layers will alert you. Um, Basically, what that's telling you is that that layer isn't turned on. So if you want uh, analysis of those layers, you should go ahead and turn them on. It may also mean that you're not zooming closely enough. Uh, one thing to note is that uh, some data sets won't draw until you're more closely zoomed in. Uh, that's just because of the level of detail of those data sets and, and the performance of the application. Um, so we will look at, at some of the ones that are turned on right now. Uh, the coastal access locations, it was able to find eight features here. And when you click on one of these, you'll see that it highlights in the screen. Uh, and any underlying attributes that are included with that feature will be there. Um, so for example, this particular data set has photos um, that you can click on. Um, you can also then go ahead and click the print icon at the top here so that if you wanted this for uh, analysis in the future, uh, you can go ahead and generate that report and print it or save it to your desktop. Um, you'll notice also that it, uh, in addition to pulling uh, the legends, the number of features, and different attribute items, it'll also um, get a screenshot of that area of interest. Um, so moving along the toolbar, um, you have some other tools here. Uh, select tool is similar, although it's basically going to just give you um, a quick selection of any enabled uh, layers. You can check them on and off. And just like the all layers list, all of them will be included here. That'll give you a full sense of any of the included features within that area. We also have a lease query. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on the uh, California State Lands Commission lease layer. I'm just going to zoom up here. I think maybe I'll try this area. And go to the Lease query. I'm going to select um, a lease type of protective structures. Note that you can select more than one lease type, and that will return any applicable lease types um, within the current extent. And if you'd like it to be more than just the current extent of the map and the area that's visible, you can go ahead and change that option in spatial uh, filters. So if I click apply, you'll notice that it selects the leases that uh, are under that lease type. Um, and I can go ahead and select those and get additional uh, detail. Uh, next, we have a selection tool um, that's more geared towards uh, recreation. Um, in this case, I'll type in uh, Oceanside. And I'll keep the uh, five-mile buffer that it's going to search for. And then you'll notice that uh, in the points of interest tool here, you'll, you've got a couple different options, the coastal access locations as with before. It'll highlight any applicable areas. And you can go ahead and get additional details. So I'm going to skip ahead one um, just to show some of the functionality between the tools. 
uh, the Add External Data button, you can um, you can add data from ArcGIS Online. Uh, there's quite a, a few data sets out there that uh, are publicly available. I, I would caution you that um, some of them are not well documented or might uh, be erroneous. So you'll want to click on the, the Details option uh, next to uh, the ability to add that data and maybe get some additional details first. Um, but you can add quite a bit of data that way. Uh, similarly, if you have a particular web service you'd like to add into the application, you can go ahead and add that on the URL tab. Or if you had a particular project area that you were interested in adding, uh, the, tool select, uh, the tool allows for a variety of different formats, and you can go ahead, uh, browse to that file on your computer, and go ahead and um, load it to the map. And it won't be added to the total layers list for everybody. It's just going to be for your own individual uh, session for use in, in your map. Uh, so just for illustration purposes, um, I'm going to go ahead and add uh, NOAA's uh, raster navigational chart. And I'll click on the details first, actually, just to show they've marked it as authoritative. You can go ahead and add that. It takes just a second to load in here. And you'll notice uh, one of the interesting things about this service is that if you zoom in and out, it will adjust to a different level of detail. And now another tool that I skipped over that I, I wanted to show with this uh, layer is the swipe tool. Uh, earlier I uh, showed the transparency abilities. I'll go ahead and show that again with this added layer. Um, you'll see here if I um, change the transparency, you can see through it. But another option um, that some people like uh, better is to actually select that particular layer and you can swipe it on and off. Um, so if you had different data sets, um, you could see um, you can sort of compare them a little more easily this way. Now, likewise, you're going to have markup tools that you can put on the map, uh, any annotation, if you had a point of interest. You could go ahead and uh, add that to the map, uh, area selection. Uh, there's quite a few different options to mark up the map. Um, Likewise, you can change the, the base map. And then when you're happy with it, you can go ahead and print a version that will then go ahead and incorporate um, that markup. And the last item that I wanted to show uh, is our open data portal. This is actually a separate site from this application. Uh, any of the data that's available in this application, uh, you'll be able to search for here. And so um, just as an example, I'll type in uh, coastal access location. Um, here it recognizes it. Uh, you'll be able to view the extent and distribution of that data. And then you'll have a couple different download options. Uh, you can download it as a spreadsheet, a KML that can be viewed in Google Earth, uh, a shape file for GIS software. And you'll notice there's also an option for a filtered data set. Um, to get a filtered data set, you could go into the data, data tab and you can actually uh, add filters. So if you were only searching for particular features, you could go ahead and uh, add those. And then once you're ready, you can go ahead and just download um, that subset of the data. 